Hey everybody, welcome to the Master Passive Income Show. My name is Dustin Heiner, and I'm here to help you get financial independence, quit that J-O-B, that just overbroke job, by investing in real estate. And I am super pumped to bring on a great friend of mine who is an awesome investor, as well as is a fantastic business owner as well. Like myself, we have, he and I both have so much extra free time in our lives because we're not working that dead-end J-O-B that now we can actually build businesses help people, employ people who want jobs, that give them good jobs, that actually serve other people. And I have, a, he's actually going to be speaking at RubeCon again this year. He's a phenomenal speaker as well as real estate investor. And he also helps lots of people to invest in real estate as well. He has the Inner Circle Mastermind. He's a good friend of mine, legit, legit uh, social media influencer as well. So we're going to be hopefully <laughs> touching on base on that too. But I have my good friend, Felipe Mejia on with me. Hey, Felipe, this is great having you on the show. Dustin, um, I I love that you invited me back on here, dude. Um, RubeCon <clears throat> is my favorite conference. Did you know that? And I'm not saying that because no, you put no, it together. I didn't. I, I, <clears throat> no? So no, I didn't know you, you. I didn't know that was your favorite, but yes, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's not it's not my favorite because you run it. It's not my favorite because I'm on here because I'm speaking because I speak on stages. It's my favorite because of the no pitch, which I still don't know how like that makes you any money or worth your time because you don't <laughs> like no one pitches on stage. It's it's literally like a, a a two three day water hose of value. And when I I don't know if you remember, but I went to the first RubeCon, I don't know if I spoke at it or not. And then I spoke yeah, at one did. and I was, yep. I, I did. Okay. But the first time, I, cause I had been to a multiple of, of events that year. That was like everyone's like conference year, right? Like those two years, every like after COVID, well, right after like everyone was trying to get COVID. out. <laughs> yeah. So like I went to RubeCon and, and I'd been to, um, wealth or com, um, Ryan Pineda's conference, every, everyone's conference, everyone that you can think of because networking was the thing. And I was like, great, RubeCon, like another, like, all right, I just need to make sure that I don't like, and it was like, whoa, like they haven't pitched anything. They're, uh, they're, they're Christian. They have speakers up here pumping everyone up, but not overselling. They do allow people uh, to sponsor. So they have their sponsor boots, but that's like up to me. I was like, yo, this is where like all, in my opinion, every, it needs to be a staple in real estate investors business entrepreneurs conferences as a staple in their annual like if i'm going to three conferences this year and i've budgeted x amount rubcon needs to be one and it's it and you know and i'll say this thing and then i'll pass the back back it, it's not because i'm speaking there because i can't sell anything so it, it doesn't do anything for me to like super super promote it on this podcast or, or because i don't sell anything and i'm like it's absolute 100 percent free value for any of your attendees it's all it's awesome i think it's great Oh man, that's, that is so awesome to hear you say that for a, a number of different reasons. Number one, that was my vision from the beginning was I yeah. wanted something where I would want to go to as a real estate investor. It's somebody that just mm. wants to learn, wants to connect with people. And the ones that I went to in the past was all hype and sales pitch. They said, normally yeah. it's a billion dollars, but run to the back. It's a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> I hated those. And yeah. then that was the first thing. So I wanted that. But number two, <laughs> I had so many friends like you that are awesome real estate investors that are great yeah. people and also show people how to do this, that have a genuine heart of yeah. giving. That's why I love right. having you and all of our awesome speakers is because it's all about helping and all about giving. Now, the, here's a, I found you and I met, it was at another conference, which is a phenomenal conference, FinCon, uh, one of my yep. favorite conferences to go to as well. It's an online business space. Great, teaching great, about finance. great. Like, yeah. With that, you and I met there and we were hanging out and it was like, dude, this guy is awesome. Plus, you know, everything that we have in common. And just before everybody listening, so before Felipe got on and I got on to record, we were just jamming and talking. So we're going to continue that conversation on everything that we're doing. So Felipe, well, if you want to go back and listen to Felipe's story, we have that episode. Hopefully I'll remember to put it inside the description of going back and listening to, to the episode. Great, great story. He's a great investor, great dad, great husband and Christ follower as well. So with that, Felipe, you and I now have so much extra free time because we now don't work for somebody else. Now you were just saying you're creating another business, which I love because you and I know we, we both create businesses. But talk to me about, you said you learned something 
about yeah. yourself or about business in general with this yeah. new business you're creating, which is like a bookkeeping company, which I was like, dude, Felipe bookkeeping, well, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll go high level and then we'll dig into it a little bit. So what's interesting, something that I learned about business that's, that's really powerful is the cross business effect. Now, what is the cross business effect? So that's when you take two separate industries that very well complement each other crossroads. And at that crossroad is where the money is made. So why am I starting a bookkeeping company named Abacus? It's because I have realized that there is an issue in affordable bookkeeping for the average real estate investor. 70, 75% of real estate investors out there don't have more than 10 properties, which means there is certain things that they cannot afford. And even more than that have less than five. So for example, they can't afford an affordable CPA. They can't afford an affordable bookkeeper. They can't afford these things outside of still working because rightfully so, a CPA is charging a X hourly rate and most CPAs offer bookkeeping out of necessity, but they're not going to lower their hourly rate. So they're going to charge CPA hourly rate property, um, hourly rate to do their bookkeeping, which can be done at an affordable rate, i.e. real estate investing, bookkeeping, affordable. That creates me a business model. So if you do this with anything in your industry, so let's say that you are a fill in the blank. Find out if, if, if that job, what it complements make it affordable to solve a problem and you're going to have an amazing business. This is why I know Abacus there, is going to do really well. I 100% agree because I know like in my business, I'm thinking, why in the world would I hire a bookkeeper? I'll just do the little extra work or, you know, it, it's it's extra work. It's a lot of extra work. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Um, but with that, if you have just a couple properties and you're thinking, oh man, this afford that expense. But having that need in the market. Now you touched on something at the very end that I, I absolutely right. There is a need and there's somebody that you can serve. And you have those two things in mind. Give you an example, like um, Master Passive Income or RubeCon, you know, the, the conference. Uh, those are things where people were coming to me and asking me, how do I invest in real estate? It's like, well, here's how you do it. And so teaching them. And then I saw, man, people really want more of this. So I started the businesses. Now with that, what I also love. So you're doing... I think it's called something like, or it's termed like selling your sawdust. Like basically you're building your businesses and there's things that come in your business that you either develop for yourself or that are a byproduct of your business, like a bookkeeping for your real estate investing. So you figured out a way to do it right. And you're like, you know right. what, let me go ahead and, and offer this as a, an affordable and affordable way for regular everyday real estate investors to actually connect with and use. So I love that you're connecting all these together. Yeah, it's it's like you said, it's like selling the sawdust. So for me, the reason that we're doing this is because like I've seen how much my wife struggles in our bookkeeping and not because she's not smart, because my wife's like uber smart. I was an I was I was an Uber driver and in the back of a U-Haul unloading trucks when I met her. And now I'm retired and a millionaire. And sometimes I wake up and I don't know what day it is. So like obviously she is the X factor to that. Oh, totally. <laughs> <clears throat> but I see that um, it takes up a lot of her time to do the bookkeeping because she's very like analytical. She's very in the numbers. She's very in the details. And <clears throat> we, we have a bookkeeper. She still has to like get behind this person. And I'm like, okay, there's a business here because there's no way that we're the only ones having this problem. And dude, I have 80 something rental units. I can't imagine somebody that's got five or 10 that has to do this without any help, like financially, we can pay for help. Other people can't because at 10 rental properties, you're not cash flowing a bunch yet, unless you've been holding them forever. So that's why we want to make it affordable for the average investor. Um, and, and, and I think this is going to help alleviate some of that stress of like, uh, okay. So I think a lot of people mess up with being able to scale because they don't financially do it right, one. And number two, they can't tell their story. And their story comes from their books and their CPA. So if your books and your CPA are in tune, you can take that to the bank and continue getting loans. You're a coach as well. You know that the, like the second or third most asked question in real estate is, how do I get started? Or I've got three rentals, how do I keep going? Like how do I scale? they run out of money, how do I scale? And it all goes back, in my opinion, to let me see your books and let me see your tax from the last two years. If I can dig into those, I can answer just about any, I can solve just well, about any, any mentee's question. 
every every mortgage broker is going to be doing that exact same thing for you, like to you. Exactly. You ever say, hey, I want to get a mortgage. Well, let me see all of your financial history for the last two years. And so when I was quitting my job in 2016 to 2017 is when I quit my job. And I was getting a loan. And I was still working. I was bundling four properties together for a commercial loan. And with that, what I actually did was I actually had to stay working at my job for another like six months when I didn't want to. I was like, I got to get out of here. But banks don't like it when you quit your job. And so I actually had to quit. Now, let's let's I want to do a a quick transition to you asked me a question because I knew everybody else would want to learn this as well. But like where I'm at in my real estate investing, you said, like, you know, how many properties you have, where you at? Like, is that what what the question was? Yeah. So I, I want to know where, where you are at. Where are you with um, rental properties, cash flow, uh, work balance, life balance? Do you believe in that in work life and, and family life balance? You look, I, I'm going to be honest mm. to your listeners. 10 minutes and 52 seconds ago, before we started your recording, you said you wanted a conversation. So I'm not going to let this go into a podcast style interview. We're going to have a conversation. I want to know what <laughs> Justin believes. And I'm going to let you know what Felipe believes. So we're Dustin, we're either going to get canceled together or this is going to be one of your best podcasts ever. So I know we're not definitely not. I think I, I personally enjoy these conversations. So if anything, it's my podcast. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. <laughs> now with that, you asked, let me, I want to fall, touch on the last part of that question. Yeah. What was work that? Work-life balance. Do I even believe no. in work-life balance? I'll be completely honest. No. I do not believe in work-life balance. I think that's something that is imposed on us that we actually have to make sure that we have X, Y, and Z. No, here's where I come from. So I'm a man, meaning I believe that I need to provide for my family. If I literally can't do anything else but work in order for them to survive, that is all that I do. Now, the, the fact that we're blessed to live in America, have so much luxury, so all these great things, like, don't get me wrong, it's, it's absolutely fantastic that we, as you know, Americans, and hopefully lots of other places in the country and the world, will have this luxury. But we have the luxury to think, oh, I want to take off two days a week, or I want to take off more time. We have that luxury. But no, honestly, if I was st- uh, sweeping the streets, I would do it all day, every day to feed my family to put a roof over our heads, make sure that they're protected. That's my number one thing. Me hanging out with my kids, that is so, so secondary. My first goal in life, provide for my family so that they are taken care of, that they are provided for. So when I say I don't believe in work-life balance, I'm not saying you should not hang out with your kids. I'm not saying that you should forego your kids. In fact, I literally, Felipe, you'll love this, my calendar, unless it's for RubeCon, because there's so many things for RubeCon that I got to do, but my calendar with just my real estate is literally blank. If there's nothing on my calendar. So I go to the gym, hang out with my family. So I 100% yep. believe 100%, you know, I'm, I'm a family man. I got four kids and one more coming on the way. Very blessed to have our fifth one. With that, I give as much as I can to them. That's not going to provide for them. So those are my thoughts. I'm a little more of a stoic type of personality where I have a duty. Yeah. I make sure that duty gets taken care of. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's uh, that's really, really good. I would add a little bit to that. So I believe 100% with what you're saying. Um, I've, I've asked a lot of like men that I respect this question, like, where do you fall? And like, I don't want to learn from the guy that's been doing it 10 years. I don't want to learn from the guy that's been doing it five years. I want to, I want to ask these questions from the men that I respect that have been married for 60 years are wealthy in a happy marriage and their kids love them. That's who I want to know what did you do that worked right like how are you successful in business and life your marriage your kids how do they all still love you um and a couple of things that i've gotten uh back that i've that i'm that i implement is it's not about the quantity of time but it's the quality of time with your family because there was weeks where i would spend two hours with my son or my or my daughter and and they were like but those two hours bro was like i gave them two hours of like full attention hard love like almost like all right dad go right like so i was like that's 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 powerful because you see a lot of these yeah. guys are like oh i don't work on weekends to spend the time with my kids and i'm like i wonder if you're on your phone the whole two two days that you're there were you actually there or were you just there just not present so that's I, that's I've one seen, of the things that i believe so hold that thought because i want you to keep going on that but i've seen yep. where i take my family out to dinner I've seen guys or gals where they have their kid next to them. They're at a restaurant, they're eating dinner and 
they're both the mom and the and the son, or you know, so the, sad. The single parent and the other kid. They're literally on their phones the whole time. I'm like, that is mm. not quality time. That's yeah. that's quantity time, which you they're not even attached or attached to you. Like so, with that, we literally don't use our phones. Like you, you'll find that in our household, like our kids don't even get screen time. That's not even a thing. It's yeah. like every once in a while, hey, daddy, can we use this? No. Or maybe two days later, hey, daddy, can we play on the Switch? Uh, you guys have done a good job. Go ahead. So go. But anyways, keep going. You had a couple other thoughts you had. Yeah, no, that's powerful. Um, so qu quality over quantity is big for us. Um, we literally take what we like to call like Armando vacations. It's like we're going to go for two, three days on a vacation with Armando. And like, bro, what do you want to do? Like we're in Gatlinburg. I own a cabin up here. You want to go to the Sky Jump. You want to go. Uh, whatever you want to do, like, that's what we're here to do. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not perfect. If I get a text that's an emergency, then I'll answer it. Or or if there's something that needs to get done, I'll handle it. I'm not going to be the one to say my phone's away for two whole days because that's not realistic. But I try to make sure that it's a quality amount of time with my son. So that's number one. Um, the other one that was that's going to be a little controversial was um, an old head once told me, Felipe, your son, as much as you want to, he doesn't need another mom. And I was like, <laughs> what? He was like, your You're son doesn't need a, se a second mom. He, he yep. needs you to be the superhero that walks out the door, conquers the yep. world, comes back and sees how you treat mom. Like, Absolutely. and how you 100%. provide for mom and how you provide for the family. Are, are you the superhero or are you just the sidekick? The mom is 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 the mom she's gonna raise his she's gonna raise your boy but it's your responsibility to make him into a man and he was like and you're not gonna do that by giving him and this is crazy he was like you're not gonna do that by giving him quantity of time it's you're gonna do that by giving him quality time and being the superhero that he needs and the superhero comes out when only when he's needed and i was like oh my gosh like i've been doing this wrong he's like if you're just because you're wealthy, just because you're financially independent, in fact, it's going to be harder for you because you could be at home all day if you want. But what kind of picture is that painting your son? And I was like, that, I, and that's you know, you know so he doesn't need another that, mom. That's, a, that's an amazing point because I tell my kids that this life that they're living with me and mommy is not normal. Most people don't. Oh, get I have to, to say that all. I have to say that all the time. time. I, yeah, having plenty of money to do whatever we want, buy whatever. This is not normal. So when you get married, I'm and here's also another. This is kind of fun. We're turning this to a little bit of a parenting thing uh, for for everybody listening. But with this, I also want my kids not to be a trust fund kid that just thinks that they own the world and they just get money handed to them. No, no, no. My kids are literally working in my business. They are going to learn and work for every penny that they have. On top of that, whenever that they are either working in my business, like they're earning every bit of that. So all this combined, like our, us as dads, moms are different. Like we have each have our own roles that we are to play. Yep. And yep. also well, I'll quickly, I have one thing, but I also want to switch to social media, which you use that to get real <laughs> estate, which is amazing. Now, one other thing, our children, well, our daughters also do not need us to be a mom. They need us to be a dad. Cause then, you know, sadly, a lot of women, you know, as they get older, they might have daddy issues because their daddy didn't treat them the right, you know, you know either t mistreated them, treated them poorly or treated them like they were the mom. Or here's the other one, treating them like you're their friend. You're not their friend. I told mm. my kids this all the time. Mm. I'm not your friend. Like, don't think, don't consider me your friend. I am your parent. I'm your dad. I want even better for you than any friend could ever hope for you. So let's yep. quickly switch gears to social media. Now, real estate <laughs> investing, it's all about, in my opinion, it's about people. Real estate's investing about people and it's not about a property. But on top of that, the more people that know that you are a real estate investor, the more deals come, the more investors that come with you, the more, the more everything. And so I have my podcast and it's how usually people find out that I'm a podcaster, but I'm also tell, or, you know, podcaster investor. But I also tell everybody I meet when they say, hey, Dustin, what do you do? Oh, I invest in real estate. I don't say I invest in podcasts or sorry, I'm a podcaster or a YouTuber. I don't say in that. I say I'm a real estate investor because I want them to know that I'm an investor if they want to invest their money with me, if they have a property to sell. So talk to me about how you utilize not just social media, but you let everybody know that you're an investor because that's going to help everything in the long run for your business. Yeah. So I learned um, a different way to say, because I, I would get that question all the time. Well, Felipe, what do you do? Felipe, what do you do? Um, 
So I've learned, Dustin, to it depends who's asking me what I'm going to say, but it all still correlates with real estate. So, for example, <clears throat> if I'm speaking to the younger generation, let's say 16 to early 20s or something, right? Then I'm like, oh, well, I'm on social media. I invest in real estate and I teach people how to buy real estate. So then they follow me and they know that that's what they're expecting. If I'm talking to, let's say, older generation, somebody that I know has money put back or whatever the case may be, then I say that, oh, well, I'm a real estate investor <coughs> who takes or, or invests other people's money into properties and then gives them a blank return. So now they're curious, right? Because I, they're older. In my opinion, they probably should have more money. So I say that to them. Uh, if I'm speaking to people like me, right? So mid 30s, 40s, uh, I think kind of that middle ground, then I tell them that I'm just a real estate investor that teaches people how to buy real estate and, and a mix of what I just said earlier. Uh, and then I, I can take people's money and give them a return on it. So depending on who my audience is asking depends who, what I would say. All revolving around the same thing, but it's just what message do I want to portray to you? Because I'll give you an example. Dustin, if I say, if, if someone's 16 years old and says, hey, Felipe, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a real estate investor who takes people's money and makes them money. They're going to be like, oh, well, I ain't got no money. Why would <laughs> I follow you? Money. I'm not exactly. going to follow you. So it depends on who I'm talking to. No, I, you know what? That is terrific. And I've literally never done that. I literally, anybody from you know young to old, I tell them I invest in real estate. But I do, because it's hard for me to tell people, anybody that, oh, I am a, I, I podcast, teach people how to invest in real estate, like to start with that. Sure. Um, it's because it's I've done it so long that I'm a real estate investor, that that's what I do. But at the same time, the generation, you know, the younger generation, let's say, you know, 20s, that's really going to help. And in fact, here's what's fun. So I was golfing the other day and uh, this guy, I don't know, he's maybe mid 30s. Um, we were playing golf and just out like whole 15. He, well, Dustin, what do you do? You know, I asked him what he did at the very, very beginning. Cause I'm usually inquisitive. I like to know people. And sure. so he eventually asked me what I did. I said, Oh, I invest in real estate. And he said, Oh, that's interesting. And then my friend who knows me, he says, dude, he has this also, this amazing, he'll start popping me up, like promoting the amazing podcast and blah, blah, blah. I'm co like coaching all that sort of stuff. And this guy that was asked me the question, what do you do? He net looked at me and said, Oh my goodness. Like, I've seen your podcast. That's right. Oh, man. So it started clicking everything <laughs> because he listens to podcasts and he's heard yeah, the yeah. podcast. So anyways, yeah. thinking of tailoring that to your audience, I need to start doing that. Felipe. Perfect. Love it. Now, <laughs> with this social media, social, social media, media, my yes. goodness, I know people like when you get that word out that you're yeah. on social media, people, people follow you. You're a good following on Instagram, like really, really awesome following. That's why you have the inner circle mastermind because people just say, man, I want Felipe to help me. So yeah. with that, any tips or strategies that you've like, you know, I used to do this and it wasn't that good. And now I do this, but get us the good stuff. What do you do now that actually is moving the needle to help you to invest better or invest with more people? So social media is the ROI on social media is infinite because your, your videos last forever. So what I tell people is make sure that you make evergreen content, which means it's relevant forever and know who your avatar is. So like, who do you want to impact? Who do you want on the other side of the screen watching your content and how can you positively impact them? So if your message is investing in real estate, reaching financial independence, uh, cash flow, appreciating assets, and then, and then why? So like, not just what you do, but why do you do it? Well, I want to be an exceptional giver. I want to be impactful in my community. I want to do these things. So merge those two, put them on camera, and then you can leverage the audience to what you want to do. So for example, if I want to buy real estate here in Nashville, Tennessee, then I'm going to create content in accordance to that. And then the people that watch it are the people that I want to be friends with, who I want to partner with. Almost social media can be like a filter. Who do you want to follow you? I'm going to give you a perfect example, Dustin. <clears throat> I started a TikTok a year and a half ago or more, and I messed up because I was posting real estate, posting real estate, starting to get a little bit of traction. I maybe had 3,000 followers. And then there was this like major accident that happened in downtown Nashville I guess it wasn't an accident. It was actually on purpose. A van parked in front of a, of a, of a restaurant and then blew up. You might've seen it on the news. It, it, like they, like it was a bomb. And uh, I guess I shouldn't say who, but I knew somebody in the police department 
who had the original video before it even got out to the news, like live, like, like recorded. Wow. And then yeah. what I did was I recorded it off of his phone. I like over recorded it and then I posted it and it got like 17 million views on oh. my TikTok. <laughs> and the that's not good. It, I got the wrong audience. So it was the worst thing that could have happened to my TikTok. So take that as an example for everyone listening is filter and post the followers that you want. Not all followers are created equal. That's a fantastic point. And that, I love when you create content for other people to consume that is in what you want. So for me, I wanted to let people know that I invest in real estate. I wanted to share with people how to invest in real estate puts me as an expert in their mind yep. in their eye as somebody they can invest with. With that, I created the podcast, YouTube channel, and everything is literally on the path of real estate investing. And I created one video. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it, it like took my YouTube channel in a, in a direction that like I wasn't getting views. I was like, oh yeah. crap, I got to take that one down. And because of that, we need to continue on that path. Now, how do you then, let's say you do start putting out great content and mm -hmm. you are producing and producing, producing people start, man, I really want to follow this new guy, Felipe, you know, he's really great. But then you want to help them, not necessarily to invest in real estate, but to maybe, because most people in here that are listening to this don't want to actually have a podcast, don't want to be an influencer. They just want to yeah. invest in real estate better. Let's say they want to help other people invest with them or be a private money lender. How do you transition that now from them following you to then saying, hey, let's actually work together? Yeah, the, the main thing that I think there is going to be social proof. So showing the returns, showing that you've worked with other people in regards to their money or showing that you're valuable in the community in some sort of fashion. So if you're like, uh, and then it's just a call to action, right? So like on your reel, if you're looking to raise private money for a deal, you can talk about the deal, talk about the returns, how you found the deal, how you want to fund the deal, how this is going to benefit the person that you want to, to um, do business with versus just how it's going to be about you. I find a lot of people on social media make videos like, oh, look how big the house that I got is. Look how much return I'm getting. Look how much Dude, there's I, so I, many I, of them. Yeah, yes. there's every, everyone does that. So if you just turn it a little bit and say, look at the return that I'm getting my investor. Look at the, totally. look at, look, look at but how I'm for me? positively I'm watching, affected. Yeah, exactly. That's what I tell yeah, them. So I'm like, I, make it about the viewer, not about yourself. Totally. And I was listening to a, it was a panel of real estate investors, they're, they're fine investors, I'm not saying anything negative about them, but they were cre creating content and the content, somebody would ask the question, if you're a real estate investor and you want to get more people to follow you, what type of content do you put out? Like, what, is you, what do you guys normally post? And they post like their wins, their successes and what they're doing in their investing. I'm like, that probably works, but if you're just constantly showing me what you're doing as opposed to how you're helping somebody else, or you're even just educating, like if you're not educating, because I know your channel, so everybody got to definitely, uh, Felipe Hemia, Mejia, REI, right? That's what it does yep, on Instagram. That's it. Yep, that's it. I mean, you put out so much amazing content on like showing people how to do it. When step they're by step. learning, yeah, exactly. When they're learning, just like my channel, everything that we do is we're trying to help people to learn how to do it, not promoting, hey, look what I did, look what I did. That's a mistake. I think yep. a lot of people yep. getting into this I guess, online business, social media type thing, they start saying, look at my success, my success, my success. But that doesn't get people to actually buy into you that want to invest with you. It might, don't get me wrong, you'll get some people. But what's better is if you're looking at, think in the mindset, somebody watching my YouTube, Instagram, whatever it might be, what are they wanting to get out of whatever I'm giving them? Like, look, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. The, the days of look at my Lamborghini in the garage are over. <laughs> They're the, done. The, 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 yeah. The days of look at my Lamborghini, it, those days are gone. And it's more about creating your avatar. Who do you want to be watching your stuff? Because those are the people that are going to buy your stuff or invest in your stuff. So you want to attract the right people. You don't want, I, I personally don't want the investor that's like riled up about a Lamborghini versus what are the returns of investing with you? Because I can go, I can go buy a Lamborghini, but that affects me. That doesn't positively affect the next person. And I'll be completely honest and too, and say when I started Master Passive Income, 
every time I thought of the quote unquote gurus, and I hope people don't think of me as a guru. I just really just want to help. Like, like you and I, we're like somebody's next door neighbor that just wants to help people out. That's, that's, that's what we are. Yep. And I was watching all these other people back when I started investing in 2006, they were gurus. They would be on late night TV infomercials saying, Hey, we're coming to your town, a free two hour seminar. It, and then it's yep. all sales pitch and all hype it. and run to the back and go buy things. I hated that literally. I, yeah. And the people that were driving in their Ferraris, Lamborghinis, or fl flying on these planes, and they were showing all this lifestyle. I literally could not relate to that because I was like, I don't want that. I just literally want freedom in my life. I want my time back. Those things are fine, but I'll be completely honest too. That I don't get excited about fancy cars or anything like that. And in fact, yeah. my wife and I had one car for literally 10 years, no, 12 years. And just now I bought a truck, a newer truck. It's not new, new, but a newer truck because the tax man was going to take a lot of money. So I was like, oh, my accountant said, you got to buy something. You got to buy something like a truck that's actually going to help you to actually make money or not make save money from taxes. So with yep. that, I think you're a hundred percent right on that idea of like, look at me and look what I'm doing. I think that's gone. Yeah. I, I think those days are gone. And, and, you know, to, to piggyback on what you said, social media is such a powerful tool and i think everyone should be using it in some light and they should be making content that attracts the avatar that they're looking to do business with or invest in think of social media like early 2000s high school who do you want to be sitting at your lunchroom table make content <laughs> for that yep. person that's a great, great point. Now with that, how are yeah. you changing up how you're investing? Because we talked briefly and I want you to share a little bit yep. about it. Your wife got, um, you you and I are Christians, your wife's a Christian, Christ followers, just like my family. And you know, as we are sensitive to the spirit, we don't want to quench the spirit. Um, the Bible says that we want to be sensitive to the spirit. We want to pray, we read, read scripture, get wisdom from other godly people. With that, your wife got a sense that it's it's probably a good idea to prune back something in life like this year. Um, and now you started working on that, but anyways, talk about where you've been and where you're going with your real estate investing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so thanks for the question. My wife earlier last year got the word, uh, in her spirit prune and we didn't really know what like that meant. So we were like, okay, let's just be like sensitive to that. And this year we kind of, or not this year, late last year, we kind of looked into our portfolio and was like, there is a huge different Dustin difference in the how the assets are performing in relation to how much we've invested so let's say that we have 10 properties over here and 10 properties over here and each property has twenty thousand dollars invested in it why are these 10 doing way better than these in the four pillars of real estate cash flow appreciation loan pay down re-leverage why are these doing so much better <clears throat> and we realized that the reason they're doing so much better is the properties that are under Felipe's management are doing way better than the ones that I've allowed someone else to manage. And then pruning came back. So we have decided to bring the money back in house, take that money, buy more of these assets and what's working. So that's what, that's what we're doing this year, Dustin, where <clears throat> last year and this year we're taking the money that we have invested in other assets. And they're, it's not that they're not performing, they're just not performing as well as my properties that I well, have. Well, that money could be utilized someplace else so much better. Exactly. If Even <clears throat> when you're building businesses, like businesses don't start making money automatically right away. So you have to have some yep. outlay of cash, that's one. But so a lot of people invest in the stock market and that's fine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've, I have invested in the stock market. I usually follow somebody else that tells me when to buy and sell because I'm not good at that. But what I am good at, is investing into my own businesses and making my own money. Because if you can't start your own business, invest in the stock market, you're investing in businesses. I love creating businesses. In fact, I think I have five companies now that make me money, but they all flow back into my river of income, which is my real estate investing, you know, passive streams of income into the river of income. And with that, as we continue to create generational wealth, talk to me about how you're doing generational wealth like with your your family and being able to pass on these things, keeping the good performing things. Like, do you have, do you ever keep that in mind? Do you ever think about that sort of thing? Oh, dude, hundred percent. And this goes back to what we were talking about, how to raise our kids. Um, one of, one of those older guys that I asked, um, that was wealthy. I said, you know, how do you prepare? Do you just give that all to them? Like, like everyone has an answer, right? S Corp and LLCs and, and trusts and this stuff. And he was like, dude, it's really simple. <clears throat> 
you have to prepare the back of your son for the burden of the wealth that you're going to give him. So worry about making him a strong man, a good person. Don't worry. Don't worry about hardworking and, 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 and all these things. He goes, that's, that works very well for the blue collar man. And that's okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong. That's so respectable. He goes, but your son, if he follows in your footsteps, will walk into millions and millions of dollars. And it's not about how hard he can work anymore. It's can he carry that burden? Because as we all know, people that hit the lottery get crushed under that wealth. He goes, so Felipe, you have to worry more about creating the man that can sustain that kind of wealth. Does he earn it? Does he deserve it? Remember, the Lord has blessed you and your family. Yeah, exactly. Is he going to respect it, right? So I've taken the approach of, son, me and mom are wealthy. You are along for the ride, but you do not get to ride in the pass in the in the driver's seat until you've earned that. And here's the other thing: I'm not going to give you any of it. And here's why. So let me. This is important, Dustin. Here's why: if 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 I've taught him how to make it, earn it, and sustain it, then he doesn't need any of my money. If I haven't taught him that, then he's going to squander my money. So I have to teach. I will know when he's ready and he will make a deal with me or, or, Hey dad, I want to buy into the bit. Like there will be a point. And if that never comes, then I didn't do my job. He didn't reciprocate. It, 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 it's going to waste if I give it to him. Cause I've, I've Dustin, I've fought with this mentally of like, do I just give him everything? Do I like, no, that can't be right. Well, I should because he's my son. No. So I, I've landed on that. If so he I, earns it, then yeah. sure. 100% agree with you in that. And on, on top of that, I'll add a couple thoughts and going to the Bible. You and I are Christ followers. And so thinking of, when I think of the Bible, actually, when I think of anything in life. I go, what, what does the Bible say? So touching on the idea that a generation next from us so our children and then our children's children, they can literally lose and forget and literally turn away from anything if we don't teach them this sort of stuff. In fact, the Bible, uh, forgive me, I, I think it's in Deuteronomy, but it basically says that, I think it was um, after um, Hezekiah, I think after Hezekiah was reigning, I'm probably off. But anyways, people were walking with the Lord in the Old Testament. And then it literally says in one sentence, and the next generation were not taught to walk with the Lord. And they literally completely went away. So we can see that if we do not teach our children what we know, what we want to instill with them, they're literally going to, they can, and probably will literally walk, walk away. On top of that, to add to that, I believe, and the Bible says that a man stores up his, his wealth for his children's children, like the future generations. Like we, I don't think it's right to just go ahead and spend everything. In fact, what we do is we want to make sure that we're providing for our families from there, educate them so that they do not lose all the information. Cause that's the biggest thing. People come to us, you and me to learn how to invest in real estate. If we don't pass it on our kids, that's a big loss. If we just give them our real estate, they're literally going to be one of those trust fund babies that are literally just, they're not going to respect the money and they're going to be probably not the best people to be around. Probably. With yeah, that, exactly. With that, thinking about how do we create generational wealth that we can literally pass down to our children's children, but it starts with education. And I love the idea, too, that that uh, gentleman shared the burden of, of wealth. It can easily crush somebody and they'll lose it all. In fact, that's when somebody gets, um, what is it, a, uh, uh, win the lottery. Let's say they win the lottery. Usually within like three or four years, they're all bankrupt because they didn't actually yep. know how to manage the money and actually have that fun, uh, all that extra wealth, the burden of all that money. Because that money is burden. Even, even now, like I feel the burden of money. Like it's, it, it, it's a, it's a burden. So I, I have to prepare my son for that. Um, one, because it's, it's all God's anyways. So, Amen. you know, there's this, there's a story of the talents one day and look, dude, I'll be honest. I'm, I, I love Jesus. I'm a believer. I'm a Christian, but my mouth I haven't been able to clean it up perfectly. So if I say something stupid on here, just either cut it out of the podcast or something. <laughs> I just haven't been able to clean that up. But like <clears throat> in the story of the talents, God is going to like in, in my, in my, in my, in my thought, in my heart, I'm going to get to heaven one day 
And God's going to be like, Felipe, I gave you all this. What did you do with it? So not only do I have a burden to my son, but I have a burden to Christ. If I get to heaven and God's like, your son didn't earn that. You didn't like, why did you do it that way? Because even after I pass, I'm going to have to give an account for everything that was given to me. And like the story of the talents is like, whoa, like he gave one guy money. This guy hit it. This guy invested it. This guy like, and he, he talked and I was like, no, I, I have to be able to give an account for the, the, what he's given me. So I don't just think that my son deserves it. I think he has to earn it. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And with that talent, like if you think about the number one person that is in the world, obviously or in, in general is God, and then the son, Jesus Christ. And with that, the talents that he's given us as inherently in people, we're supposed to utilize those things. And in the parable of the talents, I love that it's it's looking at, and Jesus is explaining like this is the kingdom of heaven. This is what the kingdom yeah. of heaven is like. So we need to right. share the gospel, preach the gospel to people. We need to, and the, as the Bible says, let our light shine that people, non-believers will see our deeds and praise our father in heaven. So we need to do all, so everything of the above. I want my life from how I treat my wife, how I worship and serve the Lord and am a slave to righteousness, how I treat my kids, how I serve other people, how I focus. I want everything in my life to scream that there is a creator that I love and I am a slave to. When I say slave, I, I literally use that in the exact sense of the word, a slave, because the Bible says you're either a slave to righteousness and life, or you're a slave to sin and death. You're going to be a slave to one of two. And I choose to be a slave to righteousness and life. And with that, taking those talents that we've been giving very seriously and holding on to those as a legacy to give. Now, what's the future? I'm switching gears. What's the future yeah. for Inner Circle as Mastermind, as well as Felipe Mejia? Because you you, are, you, and I, like we are doers. We are movers and shakers, yeah. meaning we love building. We love growing. We love getting better. But what's new for you or what's coming up? Yeah. So Inner Circle is interesting. It's not like any other mastermind that I've seen yet. My mastermind has a flow. So you first have to do a one-on-one -on -one with me in person. Either I fly to you or you fly to me. And I'm sure you've seen it on my social. I spend six, seven, eight hours with these people. And like you spend six, seven hours with people, that like fake social media thing goes away. You get to well, know I'll, I'll pause this and say that hours. Nobody does that. Like that. That's like I honestly. If somebody would say, "Hey, Dustin, I'll pay you," you know, let's say five thousand dollars to fly to me and hang out. I'm like, I don't know. Like that. That's time. One person. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, it's dude, tough. Like, it's tough. That so is let serious. me explain that's, why that's I do legit. that. Uh, why yeah, I do ahead, it, Dustin? No, please do. <laughs> I go back to I have to give an account, and if I'm putting ten people into my mastermind, twenty people into my mastermind, taking their money and not getting to know that person, I'm. Dude, I am. I have this like fear that I will get to heaven and God said I didn't do it right. I, I don't think people fear God the way they used to. I, I just don't. And like I do. I fear that one day I'm going to get to heaven and God's going to be like, dude, I gave you Dustin Hayner and, and, and you just took his money and you didn't impact him. I'm like, oh shit, you're right. I didn't. I, 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 I let him join the program and, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you about him, God. I I thought I I was trying, dude. God's like told is gonna tell people like, dude, you I I did miracles in your name. I never knew you. Amen. Go to hell, dude. I don't know about you, Dustin, but I'm scared. Uh -huh. I have a fear of the Lord. And can you imagine you get to heaven and you thought you did everything right, and God's like, yeah, no. Seriously, like, why well, why? I so like respectfully, why do you think you're any different? then fill in the blank person next to you. So for me, I'm like, okay, if I let in a hundred people into my mastermind and I only positively affect half, the other half, I've literally wasted their time and money. And one of those could be God's children. No, thank you. Because the Bible also says that it is better to be cast into the river with a stone and a snake or something instead of making one of mine stumble. So like all that put together, Dustin, I would rather, because my time is, is valuable, but I would rather spend one-on-one -on -one with each person to where if I get to heaven, or sorry, when I get to heaven and God's like, I sent you Dustin. Yep. And Lord, I gave him eight hours full on. Did I charge? Yes. I'm still an entrepreneur. I'm not free. Like, no, I'm, I still cost money. 
But if you are willing to invest in yourself, you're going to come to me and I'm going to give you eight uninterrupted hours, six uninterrupted hours, whatever it takes of me and you one-on-one -on -one because it's, I'm not here. Like, like Dustin, I'm a selfish man. I'm sinful. I'm a selfish man. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to say, I gave Dustin six hours plus one one-on-one, -on -one, one weekly Zoom call for as long as he wanted to be in the program. And it was one cost and he could come spend the whole day with me. Now it's up to him to take action. But I will be clean when I get to heaven You're and say, giving. Lord, yes. you, you send me Dustin. I gave, like, Absolutely. I feel, I feel covered and at that. So. You know what's funny? And I didn't know this until I started having lots of people, I wouldn't say demanding, because they don't really demand. They're asking. They're asking for my time. But they want my time. I didn't realize yep. this until I had so many people. So when you're working a regular job, you're thinking, okay, you know, somebody asked for me to hang out and, you know, just they want to pick my brain. Okay, I can go do that. But let's say you had a thousand people wanting to do that. You, there's only so much time in the day. And then let me add on that. Let's say you lay tile for a living and you lay tile all day, every day. That's what you do. And then I come to you and say, hey, let me pick your brain or pick your body for eight hours. You come in here oh, and gosh. you tile my entire house literally for free. No, no, no. You wouldn't be like, no, I get paid for this. That's the type of thinking that we need to stop thinking about ourselves and as we are like, if I'm going to, let's say, um, I don't know who, Warren Buffett. And I go to Warren Buffett, like, hey, Warren Buffett, like, let me pick your brain. He's like, no, you can't do that because his time is worth so much more than that. I'm going to actually have to pay them, pay him to either work with him or I literally have a job. I pay him to work with him. But with that, we need to have a mindset that we need to actually think of time as the most expensive commodity it's, it's actually, it's priceless because that's the priceless. one thing we will always spend. And so our time and somebody, you know, for you listening to the podcast, you got to be thinking about your time as being the most valuable thing, because let's say it takes you 10 years to get to financial independence on your own. Well, that's going to be a lot of work, a lot of bumps and bruises. You're going to actually maybe lose some money. But what if you spent some money, you worked with Felipe or myself, and we got you there in five years. That's five extra years of your life where you're literally financially independent, not working for somebody. So think about, because you're going to pay with one of two ways, either with your time or with your money. I'd much rather pay with money because you can make more of that. You cannot make any more time. I agree hundred percent. And this is why um, I like RubeCon so much because RubeCon is one of those rare conferences where it's not a giant pitch fest of like, buy my NFT, buy my course, buy this, buy that. It's a place where you've created a safe place for newbie and seasoned investors to come and listen to other people's uh, advice and, and, and shortcomings and how they got to where they got. So I guess somebody might be asking themselves, okay, that sounds all great and dandy, Felipe. Like Dustin puts a bunch of time to put all these people together, but what's the kickback? Dustin doesn't pay us to go and speak. What I get out of it is for example social media i get content i get connections i like i still get something out of this i don't want people to think that i'm just like wasting my time but this is a way for me to get my name out there talk to more people positively impact more people help other people give them the value that i've been giving but the difference is i'm not doing it one-on-one -on -one for free because i wouldn't do that i'm giving it one on a 500 so that is worth my time like absolutely financially no money to me but I, I can impact 500 people at one time, that's worth it. And on top of that, we have 40 plus expert investors like yourself who are, these guys are fantastic real estate investors. Yeah. So even for, for guys like us getting around each other and saying, how, what's working for you? Maybe we can invest together. I've actually started businesses with some of my friends that, that I meet there. So it's, it's just, when we look at serving, because you hit the nail on the head too a little bit ago, that we want to focus on giving and we want to focus on serving and what, how the impact that we can have on others. If we focus on that first in anything in life from business to real estate investing to whatever we focus on the other person. And I love what the Bible says is consider others more important than yourselves. I don't think myself is that important at all. In fact, that's what the Bible tells me to do. I consider other yeah. people more important because that takes a focus off me being where I am so prideful and arrogant thinking oh, the whole entire world revolves around me instead of that how can i then couple that because it's a little you have to marry the two with your time you're you hit the nail on the head like one-on-one -on -one, that is a lot of time but if it's one on 500 then you have a different set of time different different uh you're impacting so many more people with that same time but on top of that 
what's great is, you know, people might want to work with us. People might want to just even help invest with us. Like Felipe, I love what you're doing. Let me invest with you. So yep. just getting around the right people and, and talk to me about that. You getting around the right people has helped you tremendously. I know you've partnered up with some businesses. Um, you sold some businesses, all that sort of stuff. But yep. talk to me about you connecting with other people and how that's helped you. So going to conferences and volunteering my time to impact other people has helped me in a way that, like like you said, if I can get a return on people's money or somebody be like, hey, Felipe, can I go 50-50 on it with you? But I want to learn around the process. Hey, Felipe, I wanna, I, I'll get the loan. We'll split the down payment but I want you to walk me through the process. Well, and that's worth my time. Why? Because that property will pay me forever, right? So now that's value to myself, value to the other person. So if the if the business is structured correctly, then what, what is RubeCon doing? RubeCon is putting 500, 1,000 people in the right room, and those are the people with the mindset that I want to communicate with. So I can I can talk to 10 people in, in, in an hour. Boom, 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 boom. Nope, those people are not my people. Next next hour boom so like i go to the conferences and sure i listen to the speakers but like the conference is, is in my opinion the heart of the conference is in between the speakers meetings go learn and then go implement by going into the lobby and talking to the people and say hey what did you get from that and if your value is aligned and they learn the type of things that you're learning that you know that you're in the right with the right people and that's why i love going to conferences especially like rubco man felipe you know i you and i could absolutely keep going forever and ever but we got to oh cut my it god off. it's been Where an hour people... yeah i just saw i know that. i i can I, we're just getting started you and i, I, I mean, feel like it's been 10 minutes <laughs> i know it's we're two pieces that's of fun. fun that's for sure so people need to follow you on instagram obviously wherever like, Thank how you. can people find you and connect with you and even check out the inner circle yeah awesome so follow me on instagram felipe mejia rei but honestly the best place if you want to connect to see me in person is come to rubecon because that's going to be that's that's like a passion of mine to go speak at so i will see you at rubecon um and that's where we can connect in person come up to me talk to me i'm a really friendly guy um so let's let's connect in person there but on social media just felipe mejia rei you know what's fun too i have people that come and, and uh work with me, you know, get, uh, students or that listen to the podcast or, but I get a lot of people saying, you know, Felipe, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> Felipe is a good dude. Just reach out to him. He's a good guy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I've, I've literally, no joke, had uh, dozens of people, dude, I'm coming to RoopCon because I want to meet Felipe. I'm like, that's awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I'm actually, not, I'm actually not that cool. I feel bad when people meet me because then I'm like, <laughs> I'm not cool like all these other guys. Like well, I'm but, just a but, family guy. I drive a regular car. Like, well, sure, I have. I, I've reached. Yeah, I'm going to add to that that you know, there's a saying: never meet your heroes because you'll be let down, yeah. basically. And I that's me, bro. That, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I take that to heart. Like, I'm not saying that I want to be anybody's hero. I just deliver your next door neighbor. Like, you you talk to my neighbors that live around me. I anytime they want, I'm there for them. I'm serving them. I'm helping. That's yeah. just how I am. You are too. And so. Every single person that I meet at RubeCon, even in person, like at the gym, I have people, oh, that's I listen to your pocket. Like, oh, that's great. I give them time. Oh, let me give you one quick thing. I just got to tell you this. So I like investing in gold and silver, guns and ammo, real estate, like yep. tangible things. I called up yep. this um, uh, coin store, a coin store. And I said, hey, you know, tell me the spot price you know, that you have, like how much is it cost to buy some gold? And he tells me the price and then we hang up. I said, great, thank you. And I hang up. Literally like five minutes later, he get, I get a call and I didn't answer because I was busy doing something else. But then I saw I called and I called him back. I called him back and said, hey, this is Dustin. You know, I saw as you called. I thought he was going to say, hey, the new coins came in, blah, 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 whatever. He said, hey, you're Dustin Heiner. I saw on the the, uh, <laughs> the, the voicemail or not voice of the uh, caller ID. Yeah. Do you have anything to do yeah. with Master Passive Income? I'm like, oh, yeah, actually, that's my company. And he goes, oh, yeah. man, I listened to your podcast. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> so I literally paused and my time, and I gave him, I talked to him for like five minutes, helped him out, and just educated him and whatever I could because yeah. you and I are regular people. Like, I don't want somebody to say, oh, look at this fancy person or this, this. Uh, I don't want to no, be a celebrity. I literally like don't. I just want to be a friend. I, I agree 100%, Dustin. Um, I, I get people that come up to me, like, the, the the one that I'm getting used to now is where people will stare at me at the gym <laughs> or at the airport or at restaurants. And I'm just like, do I have something on my face? Like, I'm like, can, and then I'm like, I wave like, oh, you're Felipe. And I'm like, yeah, you, you can come say I, I'm a it. regular dude. Like I'm yep. not. So if you see me out in person, please come say hi. I'm not. 
I'm not. Oh, same here. I promise. Dude, I was working at the gym and there was this lady working out next to me and she turns around and said, I've not listened to the podcast, but I, I'm listening to music, but I hear your voice. Like I'm listening to your podcast. And I was like, Oh, you, you listen to my podcast. Said, oh yes. I did. It was so fun. Anyway, That's this hilarious. is great. Felipe. You and I, I mean, we're going to be hanging out at RubeCon. So everybody come, come to RubeCon. I would love to have you guys with us. And so Felipe, thank you so much for being on the show, man. See you, buddy.